Hey, what's up guys? Bobby here and I am here today with a special guest, John Bunn from How to Film Weddings, Redeem Productions, maybe other things. We'll get into it. I'm super excited to have him on here. Uh, just a quick note, kind of housekeeping stuff. You're going to see both of us. We're recording this. We're chatting live, but we're recording and putting together later. So if you see us looking a little bit off screen, we've got each other kind of, you know, off to the side. We're going to try and look at the camera too as well. But um, just so you know, that's why that's happening. Um, so yeah, a little bit. So what I know about John, um, I would followed his work on Redeem Productions. He's been doing this for a while. I think similar. Like, it's like what, 13, 14 years? Something 13 like that. years. Yeah. 13. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. I think I'm going into my, I think this will be my 13th year. So yeah. Um, 2007 was the first like wedding I filmed. I don't know. So okay. 2007, it's yeah, 2020. Yeah. Uh, it's either my 13th or 14th year. I don't yeah, know. I'm always so. like, I, which, which seat, you know, <clears throat> exactly. So, yeah. um, and then, so, you know, I followed his work on there. Um, obviously big fan of, of your weddings. And then a couple of years ago, and we'll get into maybe the timeline and stuff like that, but how to film weddings came about. Um, you've probably heard of it. Uh, probably one of the best uh, groups on Facebook as far as like community aspect, um, just incredible amounts of knowledge being dropped by uh, John and Nick, uh, and then all the guests that they bring on with the podcasts and just a variety of other things and some big things in the work that we'll talk about. Um, so yeah, I guess that's my overview of you, John. Um, I don't I know if you have something to add to that. Um, that's, that's what I know. That's what I, you know, think of when I think of, of you guys and whatnot. So, well, uh, you know, your check is in the mail. Um, all the nice <laughs> things that you've said. No, I mean, it's really cool to be on your channel. It's fun, you know, hosting a podcast and we'll get into it, I'm sure. But just being able to be kind of on the other side of it. And, um, you know, we've been talking about doing something together for, I don't know, almost a year now, you know, it's like, we got to <laughs> yeah. like be, you know, do something. And so we've just been crazy busy. We've been building a lot of content and things like that. But yes, I, um, you know, I'm based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I started a wedding video business, um, kind of by chance. Um, I was working at a church, like a lot of people I've, I've f figured out, um, was working at a church, a friend of a friend was a youth leader and said, Hey, we're getting married. Can we uh, have you film our wedding? I went to Google, which Google was pretty new at that point. This was 2007 and, you know, looked up wedding videos and was just like, these are terrible. Uh, I don't, you know, and they were like, we'll give you 500 bucks. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I learned that it was a lot of fun. They liked it, you know, and just, I've always been very entrepreneurial. That's like my background business. You know, I used to buy and sell beanie babies. I used to uh, sell baseball cards and do like little garage sales on my front driveway, trying to sell kids things in my neighborhood. And, you know, like I always loved selling things and in that side of things. So I went to school for advertising and marketing, was into video production at my church. And then that's kind of how that all, you know, I was learning video and then learned how to shoot video kind of, I never went to school necessarily. I did some classes at my college for audio engineering and video production for TV shows and stuff, but like never really even just like learned the basics of the camera. Um, I, you know, I just did you know, I kind of learned how to play by ear. I was like, oh, this is what yeah. ISO does. This is what shutter speed does. This is, and like learned over time, but was always really good at getting my videos seen by people and then really good about like showing people how good I could serve them, which made it easier for me to sell more weddings. And I just, you know, at that point in my, you know, I'm married, I'm, you know, like no kids yet, just kind of getting, um, you know, in 2007 at that point, you know, it was like just getting going and it was like an extra $500 a month changed my life. Like, so it was like, if I can get one extra, like if I can film a wedding a month, plus my church job, like we have room in our budget, we can pay our bills. And so at the beginning it was just extra money, but then I really started falling in love with actually shooting and telling stories. And so, you know, fast yeah. forward to now redeems productions, my video company last year brought in a quarter of a million dollars for videos for weddings. I shot 25 weddings, averaged almost $10,000 a wedding film. We added photography seven years ago. So there's some more money coming in from that. Um, we've become this luxury high end brand and about five years ago, I really started wanting to do education and content and didn't know how to do it. I recorded a bunch of curriculum and never put it out in the world. Something just didn't feel right, but I just knew that because of all the messages that I was getting from different people, 
you know, it was like, Hey, how are you making this much money? How are you doing? You know, I was very involved in Facebook groups and, um, yeah. I was like, man, I really think that what I have here would be awesome if I could just get the look right and the feel right. And the shooting was, I'm good, but not great. Um, you know, maybe great, but not like world-class, you know, and then, but my business side of things, I felt like I was one of the best in the world at that side of things without being like this sleazy salesman. So, you know, 2018, 17, I saw a video on one of these Facebook groups, um, that Nick Miller posted and he posted like this tutorial video of how to remove wobble from a, a stabilized shot. And I was just like, that video looks like what I want to be producing for content. And so yeah. I reached out to him, had him shoot a wedding with me. He's from Wichita, Kansas, three hours from here. So we okay. met halfway in an, at a wedding in Oklahoma City, which is both two hours away for each of us. I paid him way too much to second shoot for me, but I had more <laughs> in mind. Uh, it was like, get to know him. We started talking about... sweeten the deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started talking numbers and stuff. We became friends. He had asked me... Hey man, could you do a mentor session and show me how you're running your business? And then I was like, only if you'll let me do one where you show me how to shoot and edit like you're doing. And mm. then I told him, Hey, I don't know if you're interested, but I am wanting to build out educational content and like started building that relationship. We launched a, a YouTube channel about two years ago this month. And now, you know, we, we launched a podcast a year and a half ago, almost it's had hundreds of thousands of downloads and views and we've had on all kinds of guests. It's 85 episodes in. We have, you know, if, if you haven't heard it yet, definitely check it out. But I know that's a long answer, but that's kind of how I've gone yeah. from being a college kid to now running, you know, what I, I believe is the largest wedding video podcast in the world. <laughs> and so, um, you yeah. know, we've got sponsors, we're traveling all over the place, speaking and teaching at places now. And, um, you know, and then we'll talk a little bit about our course as well, but that's kind of, you know, where it's, we can't believe that it's grown this fast. I mean, we've been very strategic, but, you know, we can talk about any of those details if you want, but, um, just a heart of humility is where we're still like, I can't believe this is like the fact that I can text certain people and ask questions now, or like that I'm just, yeah. it, it's really like, I have to pinch myself. I, I text Nick all the time. I'm like, how is this like our real life now? So <laughs> anyway, there you totally. go. That's the long answer. No, that's great. I love it. I mean, I wanted to get a little bit into, um, you know, kind of what the background was of how to film weddings and stuff like that. Because, you know, I feel like I've been in the community and, and following um, the podcast and stuff for, you know, probably since around when it started. Um, but I didn't know as much about the backstory. I didn't know how you and Nick kind of met up and kind of what triggered that and stuff. So that's cool to hear. Yeah. Um, I, you kind of touched on it briefly or you were like, oh, we could go, to, you know, we could talk on it if we want. But I'm actually really curious what, and this was, I think uh, somebody was asking this in the Facebook group, but um, what would you attribute like, you know, like you said, the growth of How to Film Weddings has just been like exponential through the podcast, through the YouTube channel, through the community, the Facebook group, or, you know, I guess I'm going to keep calling that the community probably. Um, but, you know, like, what would you attribute that quick growth to? Like, is there one thing that you can point to and you can say, Hey, you know, it was, you know, this or, or that or something like that. That's Sure. That's yeah. We get, we're starting to get asked this a lot, especially from people that aren't even in weddings because they're seeing what we've done. Yeah. And, you know, like I, I hate using this answer, but like, I feel like my God given gift is to see, you know, things that you should or could be doing that would help you get more eyeballs to see what you're, you know, like, so yeah. distribution is huge. You know, I, I told this to Nick and I say it a lot is his wedding films are better than mine, but I am better at getting people to see my wedding films than he's. <laughs> and so that's what yeah, it com yeah, yeah. comes down to. And so, you know, a lot of people think, you know, they, they begin conversations with like, like it, for instance, Ray Roman, big name in our industry. I wanted to build a relationship with him before asking him to be on our podcast because like, why would you be on our podcast if you're Ray Roman and there's two episodes? Yeah. And, and so it's like, I didn't want to just go, you know, th throw up to anybody that I think is a big deal, you know, Oh, will you be on our podcast or anything like that? It was more, okay, let's figure out how we can add value to people first. So we recorded a bunch of episodes, got some, you know, people on, um, 
But like I started re- interacting with Ray like six or seven years ago and went to his workshop and became friends with him on Facebook and messaged, you know, just about stuff and like not trying to build like, but I just was building relationships with people. And yeah. I think that so many times, whether you're trying to sell a, a wedding video or you're trying to sell something, people forget about like the fact that people want to do business with people they have a relationship with. And I'm not guilting people to be in the podcast or on the podcast, but at the beginning, <laughs> you know, people, you could tell people were like, okay, we're going to see if this is going to last. And so, you know, one of our first big guests on, um, you know, Craig Adams, who has his own YouTube channel now, or like was running Wedding Film School and is like, you know, and the episode itself, we didn't really talk many things about weddings. We didn't really have a specific topic that like we, it wasn't like this knock it out of the park episode, but we, I knew that if, you know, and I had built a relationship with him, like I had met him a couple of times or whatever. It was like, I know that if we can talk to him and kind of get, give him something in exchange, you know, like we didn't pay him, but yeah. got him on the podcast and he shared, he was on our podcast and immediately that day, like we added two or 300 more people to our Instagram and people listening. And then it was like, Oh, you know, we got in Patrick Moreau from muse. Like I had been yeah. friends with him and messaging with him and was like, Hey, you know, like I don't just start out a message with, Hey, will you be on our podcast? But like, you know, I, I'm getting to know them and saying, hey, if you ever have a chance, we'd love to bring you on. Talk to. And so people in the educational space would see other names. And so you had to have a few names to get the ball rolling. And it was really hard at the beginning. Um, but I thought if we can just get people with, you know, a little bit of a following to come on and we can show others with followings that like we're the real deal. You know, that's when the work began. Then the podcast had to be good. You know, we, we had to have. Like we had to have a good podcast on top of it. And so then we got Ray on the podcast. And once Ray Roman was on the podcast, it was like, well, if Ray's been on, like he kind of, you know, then it's like white and and reveries (laughs) coming on and forestry films. And we've met uh, Matt Johnson. And like, so some of these people that are, you know, have a little bit more of a following and people that trust them. And whenever we would interview these people, there would be really good interviews that would really help. And Nick and I's one, two punch. And so your question, you know, is like how to like what one thing, um, the distribution side of things, like I was thinking, how can we get people to see that this is legit and how can we get as many eyeballs on it as possible? And once they get there, are they going to want to stay there? And so that was like the process of that. And then, you know, now we listen, you know, we only had audio on the first like 15 or 16 episodes. We added video and it was really bad video. And then I (laughs) figured out how to do studio lighting and then it looked better. And then it was, you know, but a lot of people I think are so paralyzed by, well, it's not, it doesn't look how I want it to look yet. Yeah, it's not perfect. Or sound. And it's like, you got to get going. And I I agree, it can't be crap. But like the beginning to where it's at now, you know, with animated graphics coming in and sponsors and like all this stuff, like we had to take yeah. steps and then we could fine tune. And so hopefully, yeah. I mean, maybe hopefully. that answers the question a little bit. No, I think so. I mean, it sounded like if you boil it down, it's basically Ray Roman is the reason you guys. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. <laughs> no. False. Um, so yeah, <laughs> no, but I, I get that. Like the process, I mean, even like, man, I've gone back and looked at like some of the tutorial stuff I've done where, you know, it's <laughs> I like I get the point across, right? Like what I'm trying to teach is is well taught maybe, but yeah, like the audio is rough or the video is is, you know, maybe not bad, but like you see improvements as you go back and obviously I've seen that in, in how to film weddings and the stuff that you yeah, guys are and putting out. I think a lot of people, you know, it's like we would get comments at the beginning like you need to run a DSer on your audio. It's yeah. not and it's like It doesn't matter if the audio is sucky, if the content is good. Obviously, we want to make the audio sound as good as possible and we're going to get there. But the content is still king. You know, videos go viral on Facebook or YouTube because of the content, not necessarily the quality of. And so we just we knew the quality like from the beginning, our branding, everything. We spent a ton of time and. I'm not going to lie. I mean, whenever Nick and I started, it was like, it's going to be a two year window, Nick. Are you willing to work for two years before we make a penny? And he was like, I'm willing to, are you willing to? And he spent a ton, he's done all of our graphics and our branding and our motion graphics. And he is very talented in that. 
And like, so that was the missing piece that I knew that I was very talented in. Like, how can we get distribution? How can we get the, how can we make it feel entertaining? Cause people, you know, don't want to be bored. They just want to feel like they're having a cool hang with a couple other people that are in the industry. And so it's very, very strategic in the fact that like, it feels a certain way and doesn't feel uptight. And, you know, we wanted it to feel like Jimmy Fallon. We wanted it to feel like just, you know, Jimmy does things with celebrities and humanizes them. And, you know, at the same time, you know, he is very talented and he can do a lot of, and it's like, we're very talented, but at the same time, we look at this as entertainment with bits and pieces of, you know, education just in, and that's how we view it. And a lot of people are like, I'm very educated, but they're super boring to listen to, or they're not thinking about the way that it sounds or feels or, you know, and so that for us was a huge thing. And having Nick and me both having our own full-time incomes and spending five to 10 hours a week at the beginning. And then now it's switched over to more, you know, most of our time is how to film weddings. And so it's replacing our incomes with our video businesses and exceeding them. And so it's unreal. You know, when people started asking if they could sponsor the podcast, I was just like, wait, what? And yeah. so in, in it, in a spoiler, it did <laughs> not take, get back to you. <laughs> it did not take 24 months for us to make money. It took us about eight months, but still most people, they just, they would give up in that amount of time. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's a, it's a tough path. And when, you know, yeah, when you aren't making money for the first part and you have, I mean, you have to make money, right? So how much you need money you dedicate yeah. to it and, you know, stuff like that can be tough and, um, have you seen, okay, so Redeem Productions, your company, mm-hmm. and then, um, Nix is Wild Oak Films. Wild Oak. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I guess, I don't know if you can answer for both of you or just for you is fine too, but like, you know, with the growth of how to film weddings, you mentioned that it's, it's almost overtaking kind of your, your brand. So I guess two part question, like, have you seen, uh, how to film weddings and kind of as that has grown and, and spread and whatnot, has that affected, um, your like has have you seen correlation to growth in your personal brands as so well? So much. Yeah. Like okay. Yeah. Because here's imagine, the thing, yeah. I get to interview the best in the world at this craft yeah. and ask them the questions that most people want to ask them. And so now, like whenever I filmed in Italy this summer, before going, I just FaceTimed with Henry Martins and said, yeah. Hey, tell me everything you you know about traveling. I think I remember that one. And we recorded Was that the it. one where uh was he in like Bali or something like that? Uh, that was that was part one of it. Yeah, we went. To, okay. We did one where he was in Bali, and then we did one where um, I recorded just asking him all the things that I needed to know to get to Italy. What should I be thinking about? Mm-hmm. And we turned that into a podcast. But yes, um, what's been cool about it because How to Film Weddings is starting to really generate some revenue is that I am taking less weddings. So my yeah. happy place is like 15 weddings and I'm already at 15 for the year. Yeah. I'll take more, but I was able to raise my prices. So the quality of yeah. each film is going way up. Um, well, you can be more selective and, and whatnot, basically. And so general. like all of our films, you know, we start at 6,500 right now for our videos. And I mean, I just booked an $11,000 package for video, 14,000 for video photo. And so those are, yeah. it's, it's rare that it's under $10,000 for, and that's just at this point, you know, with how to film weddings, doing what it's doing, becoming gravy on the biscuit, you know, if you're from the, the totally. South, <laughs> yeah, so I'm not, it's, but you know, <laughs> yeah, you get it. Icing on the cake. Yeah. That's, that's how <laughs> yeah, you should say it. Yeah. Go. That's more Minnesotan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, so, you know, we touched on this in the beginning um, and, and kind of getting into that growth of how to film weddings and next steps for you guys. Um, you guys have announced a course. Yes. Um, an online, online, what, workshop course? I don't know what you'd refer to it. It's definitely a course refer- over a workshop, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys are, so it's, uh, it is the complete wedding videography course. Yep. And it launches... Just to get kind of get the details out. Yeah, so it's I, launching I, in February, what, February weeks, 10th. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. February 10th. Yep. So probably a couple of days after this comes out. Um, and, you know, I'm super excited for it. I know the community is super excited for it. I think you guys are going to do huge things with that. But give me like a rundown of, I mean, <clears throat> I think it's somewhat inherent, right, in the name. But yeah. what are you guys after? Like, what is this offering? Like, 
what's kind of the little pitch and then we'll dive into some details yeah. you know, from there. Well, thanks for even letting me chat about it. It is something that's been on my heart and, you know, Nick's heart for a long time. And when we started the podcast, you know, we didn't think we would be making a course or making it this quickly. But it, when it came down to it, like there are a lot of course type things out there that might teach you how to do business or how to do shooting or how to maybe do editing or like a behind the scenes at our wedding. But there was never this like all inclusive business in a box blueprint for how to run a wedding video business um, from beginning to end, like everything from business shooting and editing all together. And so, yeah, we it's basically everything that we know when it comes to running our business, shooting and editing for a wedding. It's like 40 plus hours of content. And so, okay. it you know, Nick and I spent over a week just recording and months editing and we've hired an editor to help us as well. But we went, you know, and recorded in studio and broke down three different modules, business, shooting, editing. We walked through, you know, everything that it, it in, involved in all three of those down to, you know, should you be an LLC or an S corp or taxes versus, you know, like how to make more money per wedding and how to you know, kill your consultations and how to make, you know, brides want to book you or branding or, and then on the shooting, we went through every single portion of a wedding day. So, you know, from getting there till grand exit and what kinds of lens choices we're using, B-roll footage from those different parts of the day, what we're thinking, how to get the best out of it. And so that's shooting, you know, and then at the end of that shooting, there's like a three hour behind the scenes video of me full day at a wedding so they get cool. they get that and it's never before seen. Um, you know, it's it's un, like the amount of content, you know, it's basically a college level course for wedding videography. And then yeah. in the editing side, we talk through different kinds of edits. And then Nick actually spends over 10 hours editing an entire wedding film so you can see it. So, you know, if you're newer in business, your first five years, this is a no brainer. Um, if you've, you know, you said if you, if you're a little more seasoned, um, this to me is still a course to consider because there's probably four or five or six nuggets that you would get that would most likely make you four or five, six hundred dollars more per wedding. Yeah. And so, you know, the, a college level course, I think these days, anywhere from five to $10,000 is what you're, you're paying for a course. Um, this is a $2,400 course and we're launching it. Um, with a six hundred dollar off, so eighteen hundred. Yeah. So that's a lot of money. We understand, but the amount of years that we've poured into this content, like we hold nothing back. And so, yeah. If you've listened to our podcast, you you kind of get glimpses of of the knowledge that we have when it comes to running our businesses. But you, we can never really go super deep into any topic. And then now we're going deep into every single topic. And so, yeah. there's that. We've recorded phone calls of you know brides and consultations we've had. So there's audio, there's PDFs, like there's all kinds of budgeting tools and email templates and everything that we've been producing and creating for our listeners, like is all, you know, things that they can pay for in our shop. And it's all included in this course. So we wanted it to be the complete guide for your whole wedding videography business. So, um, it's like for us, you know, we've been talking about the course launch since summer. That's when we recorded it. And so to be launching, you know, at recording time, we're nine or 10 days away from actually having it out in the world. But we, we've set it up in a way where, um, when you, when you purchase the course, you are put into a private Facebook group. So we're going to be putting more, like more emphasis on going yeah. deeper there and having, you know, a community that's a little more, uh, easy to manage. You know, our, our Facebook community right now is nearing 6,000 people, which is great, but you get all different kinds of things and you can't go super deep on certain topics. Um, so what, the way we're doing the course launches, it's only going to be, the cart will be open for one week. So the 10th through the 16th. And after that week is over, we're going to close the cart and we like, depending on how many people purchase it, we may end up putting it back on for sale late summer, early, like fall. But like, well, you can kind of grow with it, basically, like get that close knit community, you know, et cetera. And then kind of when you're ready to grow past that, you can. Exactly. And so we'll launch it again, but we don't know when. And that at that point, most likely it'll be back up to the 2400. I mean, we almost did three separate modules, each being like 1800 a piece. 
is what we were going to do. And so, (laughs) you know, the, the, the market has never seen a product like this that I've seen. Um, you know, there's a lot of editing courses and and we recommend, you know, our friends, you know, White and Reverie have one and, you know, Rob Adams has a course and Matt Johnson has a course and David Reynosa has a course. They're all great. And we push it a lot onto, you know, in our, uh, podcast and stuff, how important continuing education is. And, you know, $1,800, you know, if, if this knowledge does not make you more than $500 more per wedding forever, I would be really surprised. And so we even do yeah. like, we're doing like Nick and I talked about it and anybody that buys it um, within 30 days, if they've watched the whole thing and don't like it, we're just going to pay them right back. So 30 day money back all there. Th- he likes it so much. He just left. So <laughs> yep. Had to restart my camera. Oh, I didn't know you were on <laughs> fake cameras. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah no worries. Just kidding. Um. <laughs> no. So yeah, I mean the 30 day. That, the last thing I was saying was like we're we're doing a 30 day um, money back if you watch all the course and you're like I don't love it. We'll give you your money yeah. back. So crazy. We're just do, so we're trying to do I it know, all. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean I love it. I know you know specifically just from. Uh, I mean, from being in the Facebook group, from seeing your guys' podcast, like one of your big things. And I think, um, you know, we talked about it a little bit just before even starting is like, you are an open book with everything. Um, you know, there's not really a topic that you will shy away from or that you won't like divulge. Like, there's nothing where it's like, well, like, yeah, you know, we, we make around this or, you know, something like that where you kind of beat around the bush or something like that. And that's something that I think is super refreshing for this industry. Um, I know my mentor when I was starting was very much like that. Um, you know, that's that's kind of the approach that we try to take with, you know, when we have interns or um, even with like the YouTube education stuff, like there's not really a, a topic that I'm not willing to talk about. And yeah. so, you know, when you take kind of that attitude or, or that mentality that you guys have and you turn that into this comprehensive course, you know, I have no doubt that, you know, just the amount of information, the amount of knowledge that's dropped into that is going to be huge. And like you said, like, yeah, you know, maybe your target demographic, you know, your main target is, is people a little bit newer to the industry or in their first handful of years of business. But, you know, yeah, you, you look at, okay, $1,800 to make that back. I mean, that's a hundred dollars a wedding in a year only. And, and it's probably going to be more than that, obviously. It it really like, and people are like, you know, asking, we're getting a lot of, a lot of questions and the feedback, even from newer people is like for $1,800, like this will revolutionize my entire business. I mean, I can't imagine in 2007 being able to say, okay, I'm going to pay $1,800 and learn all this stuff that took, you know, this is my 13th, 14th year. And like, I'm still learning things. And we, we put it into this course and like, you know, it was, it was a lot, like it took us almost two months to write out the content and get it organized. You know I mean? We've been pouring into this. And so when it comes down to it, you know, that's for us, we made it more expensive because we want it to be an elite product. That's not just, well, let me try that out. We want people that are really invested into their business to, re- yeah. you know, to be the ones to do that. And so we're not trying to sell tens of thousands of these. We want to yeah. sell to the right people so we can help be their mentors and, and jump in that Facebook group and, you know, do pricing page reviews or video critiques or And so we're still doing the podcast. Obviously we love doing that, but like we wanted to be able to like with something like this course that gives us the freedom to let go of some of our weddings that we're shooting and focus even more on helping other people. And that's for us, you know, I'm 35, I've shot 600 or so weddings. I'm down to shoot five or 10 a year. That's cool. I'd be okay with that. (laughs) And if, if this, you know, allows us to do that and then some, you know, it's like, this is, um, you know, the best way I feel, feel like I can make an impact and help people. Absolutely. Um, oh man, I'm trying to think I had another question. Oh, I was going to say also too, like, yeah, well, one of the things that I feel like I've known, you know, you specifically for in kind of the education <clears throat> sphere, obviously shooting and editing and, you know, stuff like that, but especially the business side, like you mentioned, I think that's kind of your bread and butter. Um, and, and, you know, Nick has his strengths as well that might be different than that and stuff and you guys combine to you know obviously and 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 not to say that you don't know about shooting or whatever you know right not like that but like you know the business side is always something that you're touching on that a lot of people aren't quite frankly um Mm -hmm. you know um so 
you know, obviously I think there are, there are ways to just within this course straight up increase your profit. Um, so many. But then, yeah. And, but then I think you also look at the other side of it too, where like, you know, yeah, you could increase your profit at $500 or $1,000 a wedding or something like that through some of these tips and, and, and whatnot. But then let's, you know, talk about uh, the editing or the shooting or whatever. We're like, okay, maybe that's not direct profit, but what if you could save five hours off of every edit? What it's if you huge. could save, you know, what if you could, I guess this is more on the business side, but what if your consultations could be so streamlined and, you know, perfect that you aren't sending 20 emails or you aren't having to meet with people for three hours and then maybe another hour phone call or something. We're like, that has to be worked into that equation too. Totally. Um, yeah. You're, you're not only saving a ton of, you know, like the time is money of course, yeah. but like the things that we're talking about, you know, are, you know, the ways to get better interviews on the wedding day and to get to know your couples better. And like, so all these things, when you add them all together, kind of like your question earlier about like our podcast, like, you know, how did we get success? It's like, well, there's a lot of different ingredients to this recipe. And so yeah. you might be strong in business and not in shooting and editing or, but like, the thing is like, I feel like I'm strong in all three this at this point in my career, but just yeah. watching through some of Nick's content on his editing, I'm just like, that is so brilliant. That's going to save <laughs> me an hour per wedding or, you know, and it's these things that maybe he does doesn't realize are like super time savers or like how he colors totally. his films. And you're like, Oh, that's how you make the skin tone look like that. I just, this little nugget, it, but what it does is that whole thing, you know, we're talking branding, we're talking shooting, shooting, editing, like all of that. Like if you are changing and getting better at your shooting and editing, you're going to attract higher end couples. You're going to attract yep. more. So it all plays a role. You know, we talk about it in our podcast There's a almost, lot. It's almost like an intangible. Yeah. And that's what's happened increase. since getting to know Nick. And since Nick's getting to know me, whenever we first met, I was charging 4450 for my weddings. And now yeah. we're starting out at 6500 and booking them. And so yeah. Nick was charging 2800 3100 and he's booking $8,000 packages now. Cause his films were there, but his business was not. And so, yeah. you know, it's one of those deals where, you know, yes, I will make money off of selling these things. And I hope I make a lot of money selling these things. <laughs> that's not, I'm How not afraid you. to say that. <laughs> yes. And if people, if yeah. people want to be mad at me for that's fine, <laughs> don't buy the course. But what, yeah. but like the thing, like for me to be able to influence people's work in such a way where the entire industry can get better. Like, I feel like this yeah. is every wedding filmmaker should get this whenever, like should have this course and it's a lifetime thing. So you can always go back and be like, yes, that's, I, I need to get better at that. I want to refresh on this. And we didn't say you should use the black magic six K camera. Like we weren't talking specs on gear we're talking yeah. about you need to have three cameras at minimum at your ceremony. This is what you should be thinking yeah. about. We're, so we're walking and... through how like this product, I a million percent think is a 10 year product. Like it's it's something that in 10 years, if you bought it, it would still be just as helpful as it is today because yeah. we're walking through every bit and piece of a business of the shooting and of editing. And so whether, you know, Premiere Pro or Final Cut exists in 10 years or if, you know, it's all shot on iPhones in 10 years. I don't care. Like it doesn't matter. You the stuff you're learning. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and so, yeah, very cool. Yeah. And that's the way to do it. I mean, it's a, it's a long lasting. That is, that is the truth. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Okay. So I want to move on to another topic and this one is, this one's interesting to me cause this was, um, I mean, I, I feel like for a lot of reasons, one, I see stuff like this come up, all the time, you know, across different groups and, um, you know, outside of Facebook and stuff as well, uh, too, because, you know, you guys had an impact on, on this kind of aspect of my business specifically. I know, um, you know, you have a couple podcasts on it. Um, you know, it's been something that you've talked about in the groups. And then I think I reached out privately, uh, to you just through messages, um, and whatnot. And it ties in, you know, around the time that this comes out too, I'm going to have my last uh, video on kind of the edit and, and, you know, the full edit series that I've been doing. And that's delivery, um, the last video in that series. And you guys have impacted my delivery 
um, in kind of incorporating YouTube. And that's been, you know, something that you've kind of, I mean, I don't know that you've pioneered it, but you've been kind of almost the spokesperson in the wedding video <laughs> community for, I mean, because you have such a great example of like, Hey, this is what we did. And like, it has worked. Right. Um, so, you know, I know before for me, like I was doing Vimeo and Vimeo is still part of our workflow. And, you know, there are other things too. And I know there's a lot of, of companies and a variety of things out there, but <coughs> no, nothing has the user base that YouTube does. Mm -hmm. Um, I know like, you know, we haven't gotten to the point, uh, that you and Nick have, um, you know, on your channels for your wedding films and stuff like that, as far as like the following and subscribers and, you know, some crazy, I mean, you guys have some crazy stats on some of your videos <laughs> that you've done. Yes. Um, but you know, even in the little bit that we've done in just like keywording stuff correctly and things like that, um, and kind of the workflow that I think you had kind of alluded to of like, you know, Hey, sending it out to the bride. And then, you know, it's, it's unlisted for a little while and you kind of get this boost and stuff like that. You know, we've been getting inquiries from YouTube now. And like, you know, we, like we have our following through education stuff. I would imagine that's where most of our subscribers are. And, you know, probably some are, are from the wedding specifically, but you know, you're talking about not a big wedding film following specifically and still being able to get, you know, like measurable growth inquiries and in, you know, in turn money off of using YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube, like, so in 2017 in November, which, you know, a little over two years ago and at this point yeah. I had 367 YouTube subscribers. I think so. I had been putting, uh, you know, all my videos on YouTube for years, just like, eh, I might as well put them on there. But like, you know, I would upload it with an auto-generated thumbnail that just said Jimmy and Susie's wedding in Tulsa and not do a description, not do really any tags. not. And um, I think I saw a Craig Adams video where he was talking about TubeBuddy and growing his YouTube channel. And, and I was like, huh. And it, like something just clicked in my head like, oh, wait, brides are not on Vimeo. Brides can't yeah. find brides are, aren't going to find me on Vimeo. Most most of them aren't. It's like brides are on Google. Google owns YouTube. <laughs> Google yeah. shows off YouTube videos over Vimeo views. YouTube is what I need to be thinking of. And so, you know, I started really diving into some education on on that. And so that, you know, hours and hours of time figuring out like, oh, I should be titling this in a way that makes people want to click it. Oh, the thumbnail should be something that is compelling. Oh, I should be tagging things that brides or people might type into Google and putting that in my description as well. And so I just started like really figuring it out. And, you know, as of today, we're at, I think, 13,750 subscribers as I checked this morning yeah. or yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And so like, that's great. And I like having a, a bigger number and people book me just because they're like, I saw you had such a huge following on YouTube. You must be good or whatever. And so, yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't a trick. I didn't do any, I didn't pay for a thing or whatever. It's just like, I slowly and steadily just kept doing it more and more right and getting more and more eyeballs to see my films on YouTube, which YouTube then rolls over and shows that, you know, and so like, YouTube yeah. wants people to, you know, stay on their platform. And so if you're creating content, which we are as wedding filmmakers, that is compelling, hopefully it's compelling. That's an easy shoe in for content you can put, you know, easily to, to get, you know, your, the word out there. And you think about it, you know, if if the Double Tree Hotel is a nice hotel downtown at your, your you know, city and you type in as a keyword Tulsa Double Tree Hotel video or whatever, what's yeah. going to show up and how do you show up? And so, so many times, like I just got back from Santa Barbara, California, which is, hey, you know, hey, hey, I love it. There. Yeah, love love me some Santa Barbara, my favorite city. Yeah, where you were know. you? Uh, where were you shooting? Um, I shot at the Four Seasons Biltmore this time. But nice. like, I've done about fifty weddings now in California, and I live in Tulsa, yeah. because people find me on YouTube. The one I just did, they've now paid us over sixteen thousand dollars for video and for photo, 
Mm-hmm. And she found me on YouTube, flew me out to Santa Barbara, put us up for a week. I got to take my family to Disneyland again. <laughs> we got to stay at a resort. You got to go to the beach. You know, when you live in Oklahoma, there's not a beach for a thousand <laughs> miles. And so, you know, and people are finding us and saying, I found you on YouTube. I just searched Santa Barbara wedding video and you showed up first. So I've, I yeah. didn't even realize you lived in Tulsa. I didn't, but I, I love your work and I'm in love with it now. And I want you to, and so, you know, YouTube for me has become like, it, it is not only, yes, it makes us money by booking us weddings, but now since we have a larger following, I've really started to double down and put more time into creating content from my content that gets a lot of views. And so, yeah. um, we, we got monetized in March of last year and, um, you have to have a certain number of subscribers and watch hours and stuff. But, yeah. um, I got monetized in March. And since then, you know, in like nine months, we've made about $6,000 on just YouTube ad rev. Like I, yeah. I haven't tried at all. I've just, <laughs> it, I'm just doing what I was doing anyway. And if you don't know, that's about the same price that I'm charging for a wedding. So it was like, I got a free wedding. And yeah, so every month from- on the 20th, I get five or 600 bucks just because, and and yeah. so I was like, huh, in 2020, I'm going to actually try and see what happens by putting specific, you know, so we've released two videos this year already, a compilation video of grooms reacting to seeing their brides and a compilation video of dads reacting to seeing their daughters in, on their wedding days. But like, yeah. if you're a wedding filmmaker, you should be making that video and looking at yeah. my YouTube channel at Redeemed Productions um, to see how I've been doing it. But I did one of those last year, a compilation video, and it's right at 500,000 views right now. And it's like, okay, you know, it's made four or $500 for my channel, but it has gotten me about a thousand new subscribers. So now every time I post yep. a video, they all get a notification and then YouTube is excited and it, it kind of does this whole spinning upward kind of thing. So yeah, if you're not on YouTube and you're not, you know, building that, it's one of those things kind of like what I was saying about our podcast. You probably won't, won't make money for two years. You know, it was 2017 until, you know, it was about like 15 months of me building before I got monetized. And then for sure. And so, you know, there's that slow, steady build that, that comes with it. But the people that don't quit usually win. Yeah. So I had, I, I'm actually glad you talked about the compilations. I had that on my list down here. Yeah. Um, Cause I think that's super interesting. I mean, obviously you see that stuff around, but like you being so intentional with it um, and kind of getting, you know, being intentional with it and having it work. Right. And that's, you know, like you said, that's, I mean, every, everybody probably watching this has 10, 20 weddings, something from just the past year. And it's like, you, you have that footage. How hard is it? You know, and I'm guilty of it too. Like I haven't put together something like that. I should. Yeah, that's, that's an Maybe easy, that's an easy one for sure. Cause it took me, yeah, it yeah. literally took me like 20 minutes to like drop every final project into my editor, chop up the first looks, take away yeah. everything else, do some transitions between <laughs> them, put them together, make yeah. a thumbnail. Do you have, um, so I, I got a couple questions yeah. for you, but so for the compilation specifically, are you just grabbing like, I mean, you know, obviously you want any of your first looks, let's say, that are good. Maybe not all of them are, are great for mm-hmm. different reasons. Are, are you like, are you doing a hard cutoff at like a certain time though? Are you saying like, hey, I only want this video to be 10 minutes. So I'm, I'm going to take these two out. Even I'm doing okay. the opposite where it's like, I'm okay. trying to stretch it till at least 10 minutes. And so <laughs> okay. like yeah, on, yeah, my, yeah. on my compilation for first looks, it was only eight minutes. So I included three first looks with dads as a bonus. Okay at the end. Yeah, yeah. And I'm including my, it's, it's in order from what I think is to be the best ones down to the least best ones. Cause I want yeah. to, you know, like keep Hook people, people in YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the average duration view of my 10 minute film is like four minutes and seven seconds, which is way high yeah. for a YouTube video. And I'm a geek yeah. about the analytics and stuff like that. But <laughs> you know, if you're creating content like that and yes, you should have plenty of weddings that you, you know, like, it really, if you took two hours one day, you could probably make like three or four solid YouTube videos. Um, yeah. just to, just to get your channel going and rolling. And so that's a second, like I, I like the income from YouTube, but the income that I make from booking weddings is way better. Um, you know, I've probably made 50,000 or more dollars just from the bookings from YouTube last year. So that's more than yeah. six, the 6,000 that, 
but that is my low, like slow burn, grow it, keep, you know, and hopefully it turns into thousands per month. And then, you know, it's like, oh, that's the same as me shooting two weddings or three weddings a year. Yeah. So, you know, just trying to get multiple streams coming in from different, you know, places. And so Absolutely. because I already have the content without a ton of education, like without a ton of work, I can create things that could go viral. And, you know, people are like, that's yeah. clickbaity or that. But like to me, I'm writing titles that are true. I'm trying to get people yeah, to click, wrong. but it's yeah. not like this is the most insane reception ever. You know, it's like dad yeah, cries yeah. when he sees his bride, you know, you'll melt when you see this or, you know, things like that Yeah. to me and getting people interested because if somebody does type in Southern Hills country club wedding video, I'm one of the first ones that show up on Google yeah. and on YouTube. And so people are finding those. I'm getting paid and ads. Too, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, we have, Right, you know, as wedding videographers, as being in the industry, we look at a title and we're like, oh, I'm not gonna click that. But like, if a bride sees that, like, that is 100% what they wanna click on. And so, really, you're working. I mean, it's one of those things, right? I think that happens in a variety of aspects in this business of like, oh, you know, it's like when people argue about like opening with a drone shot or something, right? It's like, you know, I get it. We see it day in and day out. We see it on all, you know, many of our colleagues' videos and whatever, but like, you know, or even using a drone in general or whatever, where it's yeah. like, but guess what? Like the bride and groom think it's awesome. They've yeah. seen it once or twice and they want it in their video, you know? So it's something like that where it's like, well, think about who's actually paying you. Exactly. And looking for exactly. you and whatnot. So. There's so many people in our industry, especially wedding filmmaking, that are so worried about other wedding videographers thinking their stuff is good. Like it blows yeah. my mind. Like I've never been that guy and I I'm less of the artistic, like really needing approval by like, I, I like you, Bobby, but I could care less <laughs> if you like my wedding films. I really don't care if you ever watch them. I don't really want you to subscribe yeah. to my channel. Like that's, that's not what I'm after, you know, like how to film weddings, our podcast channel. It's like, I do care what you think on that because you're my yeah. audience. You're my target exactly. market. And so like, you have to be thinking like, who do I want to watch this? I'm putting myself in the shoes of that person. You know, it's like TikTok these days, right? People are like, yep. TikTok's stupid. It's whatever. And it's like, if you're not on TikTok and you're not messing with it or trying to figure it out or like, yeah, maybe you're too old for the demo right now or whatever, but it will age itself up. And if you're not yep. thinking about it, like... There's just people get so romanticized in their their like this is the way it should be done or you know people are like your colors a little bit off in your film and I'm like I don't care I made twenty thousand dollars on that yeah. film and booked three more weddings and like, they loved it you know and they and, loved and that's what it matters. Yeah. yeah and so that's a, that's a huge point for people listening or watching is like who's your audience do you ca like you can't make everybody happy and like I don't care if you know, any wedding filmmaker ever you ever watches one of my wedding films ever. Like I, I'm <laughs> trying to impress potential brides, brides, moms, you know, people at their sorority watching films to make them cry, subscribing to the channel. Yep. You know, that's who I want to be watching my films. So no offense, but I don't, I don't care if a wedding <laughs> filmmaker watches mine. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So just a couple more quick hitting things on the YouTube side and then yeah. we can move on to a couple like Q and a stuff and whatever. But, um, so I'm curious what you, like, you know, you are doing titles differently than most. Mm -hmm. um, and basically you're, you're being very intentional with your titles, with your, um, you know, image or thumbnail, um, obviously description <coughs> keyword or tags or whatever yep. they call it, uh, stuff like that. What, like, what is kind of, I guess, like, if you could quickly go through each of those things and just like, what are you looking for? What is your mind like, hey, I need to find something like, you know, oh, okay, this, like, yeah, the, the bride's dad had a really good first reaction. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure to, you know, uh, work that into the title or I always work in the, um, venue or something like that. And then the thumbnail too, like what, you know, are you just looking for a good image and then, you know, you pull it out or you export it as an image, you put some titles on mm -hmm. it or, you know, what kind of your process yeah. on that? So that's a lot of things. Um, I will, I will, uh, say too, that I did do a podcast on crushing your YouTube, um, for 2020 and that, you know, I break down in more detail, all of the different things. So, um, I'll wait on you here. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. 
So I do have a podcast that I did. I think it's episode number 68 of our podcast, I want to say, where I did like a full breakdown of everything. But yeah. what I'm so what out. I'm what I'm thinking about is when somebody is on their phone, which majority of the people are on their on the YouTube, mm. like the YouTube app is the number one downloaded app right now. So hello. But, um, <laughs> you know, when you're scrolling through your feed. What is going to be a scroll stopper? What is going to make someone mm. stop? What is going to make someone want to click? That's all I'm thinking about. How am I going yeah. to get eyeballs onto my video? Like if it is just a picture of a venue or an auto-generated thumbnail and the title is boring, I'm not going to click it. You know, we have yeah. busy schedules. You, you think about the girl that's in line at Starbucks and she's like, I'm just going to get on YouTube and search wedding videos for my venue, I'm just going to scroll. Oh, this one. Wow. That dad's about to cry. Oh, that's at my venue. Oh, that. And so like, there's things like that. Um, so yeah, a lot of times I'm showing a really awesome photo of the couple in front of something really expensive is mm -hmm. my, is my thing. Cause my brand is more of like a luxury <laughs> brand. So I'm yeah, trying yeah. to show off money or I'm trying to show off a $10,000 floral hanging arch thing, or I'm trying to, yeah. um, you know, but sometimes it's like the father of the bride melts. And so like, I'm showing a frame from that happening and yes, I'll export out a, um, a still image, bring it into Lightroom. I have some presets for my color. Um, then I'll bring it over to Photoshop and put a tie, like the, the matching title and stuff on it. And, yeah. Um, and that's for my wedding films. I like them all to look the same. And then the videos that I'm trying to like get go viral, like I just posted one yesterday, dad seeing their daughters on the wedding day. Um, like it's a little bit more of a big aerial black, uh, you know, or bold font on top of a yeah, dark, you yeah. know, so it's just a scrollable, like, Oh, I want to click it. I feel like the thumbnail is very attractive to want to click if you're into like, even if you're like, that is a video to me that I'm just wanting the masses of people that like crying, watching wedding yeah. films. Yeah. Like, that's not a potential bride necessarily. I mean, not necessarily. Be, but yeah. you're reaching way beyond that. Yes. And so if I'm growing my channel with 12,000, 13,000 subscribers and growing every time I post a video though, more and more people watch it. And so what that does with YouTube is when I do post one of my wedding films at Southern Hills country club, six, seven, eight hundred people, a thousand people watch it really quickly. And then YouTube says, well, dang, that video tagged Southern Hills, that the location is tagged at Southern Hills, that there's a title with Southern Hills that's in the description. It says to Southern Hills. That must be a good piece of content when someone types in Southern Hills. And so like it all works yeah. with itself. But yeah, the title I'm thinking at the beginning, the first five, six words need to be captivating. I'm thinking, you know, not to just put the name of the couple at the beginning, um, I always include the venue name, but I usually include that at the end. So, you know, it's like the first look with the, you know, like the groom, groom cries when he sees his bride at Southern Hills Country Club, you know, or something like that, you know, so yeah. it's in the title. But and then if I say groom cries when he sees the bride, I would want the frame to be like a shot of the groom, you know, like melting with his hands and, you know, he's or whatever. Like that's the kind of idea yeah, yeah, yeah. that I'm trying to get out um, on something like that. And then. I think you asked me about the description and the tags maybe, but I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to write a story. I'm trying to, you know, and if you go to youtube.com slash redeemed productions, you'll be able to see, um, kind of how I do it. Feel free to steal any of how I do anything again. <laughs> I don't like when it comes down to it, this is something that like people get so worried that they're going to lose their business by telling others how to do well in business. I live in yeah. Tulsa, Oklahoma. There are 400,000 people in my city. That's not a big city. Um, it's not a small city, but in Tulsa alone, there were like 10,000 weddings last year. Yeah. I want to shoot 20 at the most. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the percentage of them that are a high budget wedding are way lower, of course, but like, if I can't figure out how to knock out 20 weddings, you know, like, and show somebody what I'm doing, like, I'm not very good at business. So I'm, you know, that's my thing is like, I can show you everything I'm doing. I just do it differently than you. Even if you do exactly the same as me, you're going to do it different. You're going to have a different. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, that's the basics of YouTube. Did I miss, miss any part of the question there? I'm sorry. No, I, I, mean, ramble. I, I think you nailed it for sure. Okay, um, cool. I think it's, you know, definitely, I, I mean, I would recommend it anyway of checking out your guys' podcast. I'll try to link to it in the description cool. um, where you specifically talk about YouTube because that was a big 
I think listening to that is what kind of prompted me to reevaluate what we were doing. Um, kind of like you, like we had some videos on YouTube, they existed, some wedding films, but it was not part of my workflow. It was just like, if I remembered, you know, right. et cetera. Yeah. Um, and then reaching out to you and kind of redoing our process on that. That's awesome. Yeah. A lot of people have been talking about how they, you know, they're asking me, should I delete videos and, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, to me, I would start with like retitling old videos, re tagging yeah. them, kind of see. Um, and I also use tube tube buddy. Do you use that? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's something that like shows me where keywords are ranking and stuff like that. And that will help you to tag it correctly. Um, but yeah. And again, it's like, it feels a little overwhelming. I would start with my most recent video and start working backwards and just yeah. think you'll, you'll look at your videos if you haven't been doing them, uh, you know, with intentionality and be like, Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Like I, I can't believe, you know, people are like, <laughs> I'm only getting like three or four views. And it's like, number one, like you've got to do your part on all the titles, the thumbnails, the, the yeah. tags, all that. But the other thing that so many people don't think about, and it's the, the most important thing is just distrib distribution. And that is how are you getting people to watch your film? Or if you give the link to your couple to share, it's immediately going to get 400 to a thousand views just because people want to see their wedding film. And so instead yep. of, you know, like every time I finish a wedding video, I'm sending the couple that link, having them share it, you know, getting views there because people are like YouTube isn't as pretty of a platform as Vimeo. People don't care. Like you yeah. care it's, as a it's filmmaker. It's going back to what's your audience. Yeah. And so our audience is not wedding filmmakers or graphic designers or whatever. Mostly. I mean, yeah. sure, you could film somebody who's a wedding filmmaker, whatever. But and you just want eyeballs watching that video. You want eyeballs exactly. watching that video. And sooner or later, YouTube starts saying, wow, 400 people watched that video all the way through. That must be yeah. good content. Let me serve it up to some suggested, some people that watch films that are like this. And if yeah. you, if people click it and your content sucks and they click away, YouTube says, sorry. Or if they click it or if they don't click it because the thumbnail sucks, like, yeah. you know, if you think about, you think about your friend posting her wedding film, you know, or whatever, you're probably going to click it even if the thumbnail sucks because you know her. But yep. once YouTube sees this, it, you know, all this stuff, and then it's like, okay, we're going to start serving this in the suggested videos tab for a second to see they do a small test. And then if people click it, they show it to more people. And then that's how it gets viral. Um, yeah. You know, if nobody's clicking it because the title sucks and the thumbnail sucks, Okay. Or if the content sucks. And so you just have to, yeah. it all works together. And so, yeah, hopefully that stuff's helpful. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. Okay. So I feel like we've kind of hit the big topics, um, that I want to go over. Um, we're like, I don't know, an hour in or something at yeah. this point. So one of my big things that, that I like to do, like the handful of times that I've brought people on and I've usually done it live. So this is a little bit different, but you know, I, I, I do like having the community be able to ask questions, yeah. um, whether that's on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. So, you know, I put out a couple um, a couple questions in a few places and, and grabbed a few or, you know, a couple posts, grabbed a few <coughs> questions from that, from the community. Um, I would love, I mean, I've got like, I don't know, five of them here. Um, I'll so go quick. Like, I'll try to answer quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of them are quick, like, you know, name one, you know, whatever. And some are a little bit deeper and we can go into it as much as possible. And, sure. you know, obviously we both have schedules as well so if we don't get to all of them that's all right but um but yeah so they are in probably a very random and and not fluid order but i'm just going to hit through them perfect so, um and i don't know who asked these so sorry but um one of the questions was what you know if if something comes to mind i guess what was like the most pointless piece of gear that you've invested in like what was something you know what i mean where you're just like oh man i gotta have this and then <laughs> um you know, you i think it, it was i mean for a while, I would have said it differently, but my slider that I've purchased, I don't ever, ever use that. Um, I did buy a, an Osmo action that was like the gimbal thing that yep, yep. I tried to use that for a minute. Um, and the quality and low light was terrible and didn't match anything. So it's sitting <laughs> in a case over there right now. Yeah, I've um, got a few things like yeah. that around. <laughs> it's like, I'll sell that one day, but yeah, I think... Yeah. Stuff like that. Oh, and I had a friend make me a homemade jib in 2009. Okay. Big nice. waste of money and time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. awesome. Yeah, I'm trying to think what would be. 
Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I, I've tried like a few things. Like there's a few uh, monopod brands when I was looking for a new monopod. And like we've always used Manfrotto and still use Manfrotto. Yeah. But, like I tried to venture out and I was just like, I just don't like this. Yeah. Like there's nothing wrong with it. But it just didn't function the way I wanted to, stuff like that. And then there's, you know, there's that whole category, right, of like right. Osmo Action Cam, like GoPro, and you're like, oh, I could get this sweet shot, and you're like, yeah, I never really use though. it. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah exactly. Yep. Like I for sure have a closet somewhere that's just like things I should sell. That maybe I will. Yeah, <laughs> you know? maybe every day I don't sell them, they start losing more and more value. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I just close that door and I don't look in it. Um, <laughs> Okay, so another one, this this one can get a little bit deeper, but like, and, you know, I have my take on this, I'll be interested to hear yours, is like, you know, uh, and, and I think it is interesting when you are doing less weddings, and you're being more picky with your weddings, or, you know, so to speak, mm -hmm. but, you know, when you come across clients, or, or do you, and if you do come across clients that, for whatever reason, like, not, not like a hard reason, like, hey, we can't afford you obviously it's just not going to work and, and everybody gets that. But like, you know, there's just something that's just like, Hey, I don't think this is for me, this wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, whether you just don't fit well with the couple or whatever, like what's kind of your take on that and how do you approach that? So if a couple is, you know, f number one, I do my very best quickly to see and make sure they know my starting prices. So that weeds out mm -hmm. so many people like on purpose, you know, um, and it's really hard saying no to somebody with a $4,000 budget. That's a lot of money. But my brand is high end in my city. And I only want to be shooting the weddings that match that brand. And I always used to feel guilty about that. Like, oh, yeah. you only want to do rich people's weddings. And it's like, no, that is not the truth. And if I like there, are, there have been weddings and I can talk about it in a sec where it's like they were like, we'll pay you whatever. But they were turds and I didn't want to work yeah. with them. And so I didn't work with them, but I always grew up being a people pleaser and trying to, you know, make people like me. And I just realized after a, 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 I don't know, six, seven, eight years of doing this, that no matter what I do, certain people aren't going to like what I do. And so yeah. like being as true to me as possible, you know, I've had people that I've had to tell, I just don't think I'm the right fit. Um, after hearing what you're wanting for your film, I don't think I'm the right person. I think that you'd be a better fit over here with this person. I mean, the conversation doesn't come up a ton because it's so very blatantly obvious my cost. And then whenever we talk, I reiterate the cost. And so if they can't afford me, you know, yeah. they don't call like 6,500 now is my base to get. If somebody's interested and can pay 6,500, I know they can spend 10,000 if they just see the value. And so that's yeah, a different yeah. conversation about just upselling and getting people comfortable with you. But if I don't feel like I'm the right fit, you know, I was given a piece of advice, I think about 10 years ago, just like if I see a problem, I need to run to it and not away from it. And so yeah. a specific wedding that we, uh, the bride came in with her mother and the bride was really cool. The budget was like $10,000 for the video. And the mom was just terrible to the bride and terrible <laughs> to me. Wouldn't listen yeah. and be like, she just, you could tell she was going to be a ton of work, like not work. Like I'm a, I'm not afraid to work, yeah, but yeah. it was going to be rough. And so after the, the meeting, I, you know, I sit down for a second and just kind of processed it. And I sent a message to the bride and was like, Hey, I'm really sorry you know, I, no disrespect to your mom or anybody, but I just, after sitting down with you guys, I really, I can't accept your wedding. I just know I'm not the right fit for you. And I just, you know, hopefully you understand I, I can't, you know, like it feels like not what she's wanting and what I can provide is not the same thing. And they, yep, they pretty much that. begged me to do it. And I was just like, yeah. you know, I'm really sorry. I hear a couple other people, but I'm just going to have to pass. I'm sorry if that upsets you. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's fair. Right. I mean, I think, you know, I, I, I think there are definitely multiple aspects to it. Um, you know, I think on one hand, like, especially as you grow and as you're in this longer and longer, you're really working on refining, you know, who is that ideal couple and you've, you know, it sounds like you've really defined that and narrowed that down. And so part of it is, I feel like you just kind of attract that ideal couple and that's huge. Right. Like, yeah. I know we get asked that sometimes or, you know, people are always like, Oh, well, who's the craziest bride you've ever had yeah. or what, you know, whatever. And like our answer, especially, you know, as years have gone on is really like, you know, 
A, I think, yeah, to some extent, like, I don't want to say we, like, screen people, right? That's not, like, the word I would want to use. But, like, yeah. yeah, it needs to be a fit for us just like it needs to be a fit for them. And there are people that, like, we just, it just isn't. And that's okay. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But beyond that, like, with the years going on where you're really dialing in that ideal client, and this is kind of generally our answer, is, like, you know, I think we've really found, we've really, we really attract the people that we want to work with. And it's pretty rare for us to get somebody who's sending us, you know, who's a serious inquiry, at least. I mean, there's, we get tons of inquiries, so who knows? But the ones that, like, you know, it goes a step further, we chat with them, whatever. Like, almost always, those are couples who are, you know, who kind of fit that mold of our ideal our ideal couple, our yep. ideal client. And so that's a big part of it for us, I know, is just, like, narrowing that down. And in turn, as you put out more work that is high-end or, you know, barn weddings or country clubs or whatever you want to do or, like, adventurous or whatever, you know, you kind of, Exactly. Benefits of that and bring in more of that. Yeah. So now when somebody contacts us, they know our price. They're usually a referral from somebody that we already like. Yep. I can shoot a message text to the bride that they knew from that I filmed her wedding before and say, is this person cool? Yes. Yeah. Great. I can look at the <laughs> list of vendors. Okay. They're spending yeah. money. Okay. Good. Like let's do a FaceTime call or a meeting. And so that gives me a lot of time to like really, you know, and so, and again, you know, I've booked 15 weddings. It's January as we're recording this, the end of January. And it's like, I don't need any more weddings this year. Yeah. And so that helps me to be very, very selective. And it's refreshing to the people that are the right fit to like, that I'm not trying to sell them. Like it's a, yeah. it, it works to my benefit by being selective. It, it really does. Instead of being overworked and, you know, like just feeling run to the bone, you know? And so, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. So next question, you know, 13, 14 years, something like that. What is one thing, you know, it, if you could think of one thing that you would redo kind of in that beginning stage, right? When you're kind of finding your footing, I know you talked a little bit about how you got into it. Um, but is there one thing that stands <coughs> out that like, man, you know, if I could go back I, and, you know, I guess it doesn't have to be right at the beginning. Right. But like, there's, there's one point that I can distinctly point to and say, I wish I would have, you know, put money here instead, or I would have done yeah. this differently that you think would have had a big impact in either, you know, growing you to a bigger point where you are now, or maybe accelerating that, uh, that timeline. Lots of answers, but my main answer, <laughs> my main answer to that 1 billion percent, the first thing that came to my mind is education. And, yeah. um, I would have invested more and figured out what other people were offering that have been there before I would have been paying people and flying over to, you know, different States or whatever to meet with people and learn what, you know, best practices, basically, you know, what they're yeah. doing, right. Like that would have bridged the gap so much for me, like in just yeah. getting education. I didn't take any advice from anybody for like seven years. I didn't go to any conferences until 2000 and like four, 13 or something like that. And it was like eight years into business. And I met all these people that like, and I was like, Oh my goodness. Like, I can't believe I haven't been to <laughs> conferences. I haven't like those kinds of things have been game changers for me, but like, I started purchasing courses and started, you know, I bought David Reynos's course and Ray Roman's Creative Live and his, you know, it's like start learning from people, you know, our course, it, like, I can't even imagine, I like back on the, our course, like I just can't imagine the tool, like if I had something like that, whenever I would have gotten going, like yeah. I probably would have been charging $5,000, you know, this is... 2007, you have to understand, like there weren't yeah. even DSLRs, you know, there was a big camera. And so nobody was charging more than $1,500. And so, um, but now the doors are so much more open. So if I was starting again, I would be investing into education a million percent. Yeah. yeah I mean, I think that it, it kind of answers both those questions of like either growing you to a bigger point now or, you know, streamlining or, or speeding up that process. Yeah. Like, if you say, hey, I, you know, I want to film weddings and you probably do a couple first and you, you see if it's what you want to do and you figure it out yeah. and you have to make a little bit of money because you got to buy a course or whatever, but or you need to have money to buy the course. But like, you know, you're, you're basically taking, yeah, so your, your guys course, for example, is like this just super streamlined, like everything you could need to know and talk about accelerating from like hey, you know, I don't really know how to do the business side or, I, you know, I'm still figuring out like frame rates or editing or all this stuff. And like, 
you just get 13, you know, years and however many years on Nick's side, you know, you get like 20 years of knowledge dropped on you. I mean, you're basically, it's, it's like a cheat code. You're skipping like four years, five years of just like figuring stuff out on your own at your own pace and making those mistakes. I mean, that's what college is, is a cheat code for being an engineer or for being a doctor or for like, you've taken this information that has a hundred years of medical science that has been pared down into books, into classes and teachers. And so like, there isn't a college course on wedding videography, but like now there is. And so, you know, and (laughs) that's kind of the thing for me is like, if I, I never could find that tool. That's why we made that tool. Um, But, you know, there's a ton of different resources. Yes, there's free YouTube videos. And like, I mean, YouTube was not even around, you know, like whenever I was getting going. So like I kind of had to pioneer and figure it all out. And I've learned what not to do and what not to waste time on and how little gear really matters. And, you know, like your relationship with the couple is so important. And, you know, so all those kinds of things all pair down to like, if I would have just gotten some advice from somebody that was doing better than me, yeah, that would have, that would have saved me five, six years of time, For which sure. is invaluable. Like I can't imagine oh, yeah. where our, our business will be in five or six years, but I, I would have been here already if I had <laughs> already done that. So yeah, crazy. Um, all right. So touching on gear real quick, this one's a quick question. I don't know if you'll have an answer. What do you guys, sh- uh, so this is not the question, but what do you guys uh, shoot on for weddings? Um, I shoot the C100 Mark IIs right now. And yeah. most likely, like I've been waiting on Canon to. The um, R, uh, have you been looking at that? The R, mm-hmm. what is it? R5 or whatever. EOS R5. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever that is. That looks nice. Um, the Panasonic S or S1 or whatever that is, is yeah. where yeah. I'm going to go if Canon doesn't do something this year. Um, yeah. So again, though, like I never buy brand new gear. I always buy used gear. Yeah. I'm the Same. old <laughs> dork that just is not, I don't get, you know, it's too excited about the newest drones and new, For like sure. I, I want them, but I, I love buying a two year old car. Like I just love yeah. somebody else taking the hit on that. I mean, if it's something that I feel like is going to revolutionize what I'm doing, I'd buy it. But What's yeah, funny yeah. is never once has anybody like we shoot 1080p still, which is hilarious to me that I'm charging what I'm charging. Obviously, Canon's the C100 is a little bit nicer than your average yeah, 1080 yeah. camera, but like, um, I, I know I'll be able to charge more for 4K or whatnot. But like, to me, it's always been about the content more than the resolution or oh, the, the specific sure. camera. And so nobody's ever been like, is this 1080 or is this 4k? Yeah, like I mean, it, it gets back to what's your audience, right? Yeah. Who's paying you money and it's not people who are going to tear apart the resolution and whatever. Exactly. You know, so. And it looks great. Uh, it does not look. Oh bad. yeah. The yeah. C100 1080 is like phenomenal. Yeah. I had a C100 for like a week. It wasn't for me, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, but I, I was very impressed with it. It's yeah. just the form factor. I just kind of, I didn't like Yeah. It, so. And I mean, amongst the videographers, you know, this was more talking about like specs and all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. it's like find something that works for your workflow that your computer yep. can handle that. Like, again, my file sizes are tiny. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I can get out of a wedding under 200 gigs and just like power through it on like a standard iMac. Like I'm not trying to yeah. be fancy or, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, for me, that kind of like, that's what I'm shooting on. That's the answer. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that wasn't even so the I question. Guess piggybacking for what the actual question was. And I don't know. Um, I don't know if you'll have an answer for this, but somebody was asking, you know, kind of like if you were to buy one zoom lens for a crop sensor, mm-hmm. um, though, I guess, you know, you could just put any zoom lens on there and it's just going to crop in as well. Yep. Um, what would you like, what would you, cause C100, that's an APS-C sensor, yeah, it, right? It has a small crop factor to it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do you have one thing that kind of covers a couple, maybe, you know, grounds or whatever, you know, like something? Yeah. Like I mean, we, we, close. we run the 16 to 35, which is great. Uh, Canon's yep. lens. That's what I'm actually recording this interview on nice. at 22. So I use it all the okay. time. Autofocus. I have a C100 Mark II with a 16 to 35 on it for my gimbal. Um, at yeah. 16, there's no, you know, fisheye, any of that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just great. Um, internal, the, the zoom is internal. So once it's balanced, it's balanced. Um, and then we run the 70 to 200s during the ceremonies and stuff. I mean, those lenses yeah. for weddings are unreal. 
Um, yep, we do the same. We've so, had our Canon 78200s and like whether we were, cause we shot Canon for eight or nine years and we switched to Sony. We still keep that lens cause it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's we have a couple of those and um, that's the only zoom lenses. I think we have a 24 to 70 uh, L series yeah. lens that I used to use before I got the 16 to 35, but the 35 yeah. kind of feels like a 50 on my C100. So um, yep. I, I have yeah. a 51.2 that I spend the majority of my day on. Um, so, but the 16 to 35 is on one camera. Um, zoom lens though. Yeah. 70 to 200, 16 to 35 is, or yeah. something comparable to that where you For can sure. get like a, a nice compressed, like the compression on a 70 to 200 zoomed all the way into 200. Yeah. If you're pretty far away during portraits, it's nice. looks, <laughs> it's hard to beat that. Yeah. So. Yeah, we have, I run the 16 and 35 on my gimbal. I ran that when I was on Canon. I run it on Sony now. Um, I use the Sony uh, 16 yeah. 35 now, but great you know, same. I mean, I love that focal length. I love wide shots, negative space, so do like I. that. So that's great for me. Um, yeah, and for I the do, luxury so, vibe, the wide lens is nice on the gimbal. Oh yeah, sorry. And yeah, you do for what? Sure. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say. So we're we're testing out Black Magic right now. That's what I have here, and on that I have the Sigma 18 to 35, which I really like. Yeah. So not quite as wide, but it is made for a crop sensor. So yeah. I don't know. And yeah, again, totally again, like I will say this, like the drone that we use is a Phantom three advanced. Yep. And uh, like, obviously it makes me cringe a little bit when I use the two shots during the wedding that, but to me it's like, yes, I'll upgrade a, a drone, but it's a, a crappy 1080p. Yeah. And so it's like, but that gets me the one or two shots that I really need. And exactly. until I feel like. People might be like, oh, you suck because you don't have the Mavic 2 Pro Zoom Air, <laughs> blah, blah, like yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like I'll be grabbing the Mavic 2 as soon as it comes, the Mavic 3 or whatever next comes out yeah. at a discount. And so exactly, but yeah. again, grabbing the pieces of gear that like really matter to you, the lenses for me are a really big deal, things like that, um, because cameras change, getting good audio, yeah. good lights. Those are the things I'm spending money on. Those are the things that you know, yeah, you're not going to change that up every year or something yeah. like that. They're not going to come out with a new 16 to 35 every year. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Um, all right. So last question, this kind of combination of a few things that I saw, um, and it kind of has to do with story. So I guess kind of two part, which is how much, how much molding of the story are you guys doing beforehand, if that makes sense, whether that's through, consultations of like, you know, maybe not pushing people, but like trying to do a first look or reading letters or something like that. So like how much impact are you having kind of on that story on the front end? And then kind of, I guess, on the back end of how are you finding that story in the edit, whether you had an impact on it or not, I guess. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Oh yeah. Yeah. We are definitely, you know, the kinds of films that we're producing are very emotionally heavy, like heavy on the emotions and yeah. pulling personalization. And so when we book a couple, you know, we make sure that they like our style, first of all, and they like that kind of stuff. And then, um, we send out an email a few weeks after we book that kind of just says a, a, some of the things to be thinking about, you know, like mm -hmm. personalized vows, letter readings, first looks like things that are a little more personal. Um, when we, we do a six month kind of either meet up or phone call, I, I'm just reiterating, like, this is what we'd like to do. What do you got? You know, gauging yeah. your temperature, make notes, um, on the questionnaire that we send out two weeks before the wedding. It's, are you guys wanting, are you guys planning to do letters? First look, da -da, tell us your story. And so like, we're gathering all this data to do a final meeting one week before the wedding, um, where we're diving into certain questions and things about their story and trying to get to know them more than like their happy face. Like, and so yeah. the more that we can get to know them, the more they trust us. Um, that translates a lot on the wedding day and just making them feel comfortable. And so, yeah, we, we get to know a lot about their story. We make suggestions, we tell them, you know, like we recommend you guys write vows to each other and do that at your first look because of this. And this is a video where we did that. And this, is, and so we're just showing them these things. And some people are like, we do not want to see each other. We are not writing vows. And it's like, yeah. that's fine. Tell me about your speeches. Who's giving speeches? How long have they known you? How long? And so we're just trying to find, you know, a story that we can run with. And in that way we can shoot based on 
those couple of things. You know, it's like the couples yeah. getting married at a ranch where the dad built the ranch and the dad passed away when the groom was 12. It's like, I wouldn't have known that. That's an actual story of an October yeah, wedding yeah. unless I dove deep. And then it's like, hey, do you have any like footage from when you're kids at this ranch? And oh, do you yeah. have? And but we're asking them questions about the ranch on the wedding day. And that's almost its own character. And then in the edit, we're pulling, you know, certain things and moments from, you know, we're taking notes of, of what's kind of storyline things and it, it all factors in like, if you just show up and hit record and then try to make something happen, it's going to be way less impactful. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Well, that's sweet man, I feel like that's like, that's the questions from the community. That's questions for me. That's hitting on all the big topics. And that's, that was um, good. I'm going to take me a nap, yeah. eat me a burger yeah, and take me a nap. Sure. No, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you <laughs> My so much for that's being with well. yeah, It's done. <laughs> um, this is sick. I'm sorry. That's yeah, no hilarious. worries. An hour and a half, that light goes out. Well, now you know. Yeah. Do a time for a review video of that light, and you're like, an yeah. hour and a half on a dot. <laughs> um, well, sweet. Thank you so much for being willing to do this. Um, you know, we've, we've chatted on and off, um, but it, it's great being able to you know, just sit down and go through some big topics. Um, you know, yeah. I'm a huge fan of what you and Nick are doing, um, both with how to film weddings and with your guys' individual brands and wedding films. And, um, you know, like I said, I've learned from you guys, um, you know, as have a bunch of people. Um, and we covered some of that today. Super excited for your guys' uh, course um, coming out on the 11th. 10th. 10th. Ah, I almost said 10th. All right. 210. 210. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. So February 10th, uh, probably a couple of days after this will come out. Um, I will link to your guys podcast. Um, if there is a website ready and there is ready to go, which I yeah. imagine, yep. I think yep. you had sent it to me. So that will all be in the description. Um, so you guys can go check that out and, uh, yeah, definitely recommend jumping into the how to film weddings group. If you aren't already follow John and Nick on their individual channels on their podcast channel and other things. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Of course. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. If anybody has questions, just hit me up. I'd love to answer them for you.